Hello everyone, I'm here to talk about blinking lights. Everyone loves blinking lights. They're so soothing and happy. Anyhow, I digress, let's get back to this. Um, we're going to talk about the 4060 CMOS chip tonight. And then we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about something else first, because I just feel like talking about it first. We have it right here. It's hooked up to my power supply. Let's make sure everything's good. She's up and running. Let's kill the lights. Not completely, just enough so you guys can see what this thing is. And there it goes, it's pulsing. Oh, they're twisting on me, the leads are. It doesn't want to go the way I want it on camera. Okay, what we have here is called an RGB flasher. All right? The light's confusing my poor camera. It's called an RGB flasher. It's a red, green, and blue LED all hooked into one. All right? And this is the LED itself. There's no circuitry, no nothing hooked up to it. You just give it power and it does this. Now, the red requires around 2.1 volts. It's happiest around 2.1 to 2.3. The blue and green are happiest around 3.1, 3.2. So this is a problem. Right now this thing's running at 2.7 volts. 2.7 is a little hot for the red and a little not hot enough for the blue and the green, but it's running there. Okay? That, if I crank it up to the 3, I'm going to kill the red. If I get it down where the red's happy, like this, let's drop it down where the red's happy. Notice what happens. You can barely see the blue or the green, but you can still see the red just fine. And that's what's going on with the RGB flasher. The problem with RGB flasher is this is the pattern you get. I'm sure there's a few others out there with different patterns. The one I have does this. Now, if you want a few blinking lights, this is cool. But, and I might use it for one, maybe two spots in the Millennium Falcon build but most likely I won't use it. And you'll see why in a second, because what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna cut this off, turn the lights back on, and I'm gonna reset my power supply for the um, 4060 CMOS. What we're gonna do now is talk about the 4060 CMOS. It's sitting here on my breadboard. This half over here is, well, you guys can't see that. It might help if I get it where you can see it. So let's drop this. Focus is no longer me. This half over here is the 4060. This half over here is the 555. I do have the 555 up and running. If I have time in this video, I will show you. I'm timing this video to make sure I don't go over my allotted time. Because some, some of them have been going long. Okay, if I have time, I'll show you that one. But the focus for this video is the 4060. Okay, there's a 4040, a 4020, and a 4060. And I think there's a 4080, not sure on that. What is going on the higher numbers mean higher multipliers I'll get to that in a second we got her up and running let's dim the lights so you guys can see that a little bit better and I'm gonna focus in while I'm talking because I'm kind of the star but so is this tonight so we need to really look at that a little bit more than looking at me you see my ugly mug enough alright so there we go Let's start comparing, let's start talking about its benefits, what it's good for and what it's not good for. All right? First off, voltage requirements for the 4060 is from 15, 5 volts to 15 volts. So I've got 12 volts running through it right now. Just cranked it to 13. Just cranked it to 14. You notice not one difference on the LEDs. And that's because the LED. I mean, the chip is regulating the voltage across the LEDs. Okay? It's regulating the voltage, which means I don't have to put resistors on the LEDs. This is wonderful for you hobbyists, for you model builders. This is exactly what you want. No LEDs, you just wire the things in and you're done. I mean, not LEDs, sorry, no resistors. You just wire them in and you're done. That's a great thing. So I can put 15 volts across this and I don't need one resistor on my LEDs. Beautiful for blinking lights, okay? Now, should I run five volts? Should I run 15? Should I run 12? Well, the higher the voltage, the more LEDs this thing will support, okay? 
the higher voltages just means more juice is coming off the chips, which means it can run more LEDs. Now, each pin can support one, maybe two LEDs, each set of pinouts. And I've actually run six LEDs off one set of pinouts, and they're visible. If I have time, I'll show you that, too. I don't know if I'm going to have time in this video for that. But I've done that. It's on my Enterprise NX. You can go look up those videos. The spinner in the engine is driven with this. Okay? Now, going up, it does regulate the voltage. It is a low power chip. So if you're going to run your stuff on batteries, this is what you should use. You don't want a 555. The 555 is going to drain your batteries. The 555 is eating more power than the LEDs it's flashing. This thing is in the microwatts. LEDs are in the milliwatts. So it's eating much less power than the LED. You could probably put three or four blinking LEDs, this chip, on a 9 volt battery and let it run for days. Because this thing just doesn't eat power. Okay? Is it durable? No. Too much heat? It's fried. Reverse the voltage, get your plus and minus backwards, it's fried. It's just not going to work. To reverse the voltage. I've done it and I've eaten the chips. It's one of my biggest fear in working with these things. I get my wires backwards and then everything's gone, especially once it's sealed in the model. So make sure you're wiring before you seal the model. Okay? It uses a capacitor and a resistor to fire the blink rate. Um, that was explained in the earlier video, I think, but I'll go over it again real quick. Capacitors take time to charge. And these chips, once they charge the capacitor, immediately discharge them. So what the resistor does is it slows that charging time. So by varying the rate of the resistor, I can vary the blink rate. Okay? Let's show you a good example of this. Let me zoom in a little bit so where you guys can see individual colors. This is a rheostat or a potential potentiometer here. And you can tell all of a sudden they went steady, and if I turn it the other way, you can see the blink rate changes when I change this. Now if I have time, I'm going to remove some of those LEDs to really, really, really show you how that affects things. Because I'll explain that in a minute. Okay? Now, can this thing do a strobe? No. All it does is blink. It can do multiple, multiple blinking. It can do more than one LED blinking at a time with different blink rates. The 555 can't do that. But the 555 can do a strobe, a bright flash and then wait a little bit. Bright flash and wait a little bit. This guy can't do that. Okay? Does this have signal link? In other words, will the signal the LEDs are seeing right now leak outside the chip and affect other circuits? No. As far as I know, it won't. And I've tried it with a couple other circuits and it didn't do it. Okay? And that's pretty much the rundown of the prime features. Now let's talk about what's going on here. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit. What happens is the 4060 is a multiplier chip. It sets its timing off the capacitor and the resistor. Okay, the capacitor's over here. He's a little tiny guy. You can barely see him. It's a polyester. I think that's a polyester capacitor. I uh, will put a link of it below the video. Okay, and at the end I'm gonna put up a video. I mean, a, the circuit diagram I'm using. This is a very simple circuit, by the way. It uses one resistor, one capacitor, and the timing chip. That's it. The 555 is far more complex. It uses two or three resistors, a capacitor, sometimes a diode, sometimes another capacitor, just to get stuff done. So this guy is a simple circuit. That's another benefit of it. All right? And what happens is this. Different pins have different blink rates. What it'll do is it'll take the timing rate from the resistor and the capacitor, and then one set of pins will be two times it. The next set will be four times. The next set will be 16 times. The next set will be 32. The next set will be 64. So that's how I'm getting so many different blink rates out of this. No. Hello, everyone. Let's see one out. Got yourself a 4060 timing chip, a bunch of resistors, a capacitor or two, a breadboard, wall wart so you can power the thing. Now what the heck do you do with it? Well, that's what this little segment's about. I want to show you how to play around with it. That's the fun part, playing around with it. So I got her on. She's got some blinking going. Let's take a look, a little closer look at it, and see what's going on here. 
you adjust the camera a tiny bit and not quite where I want it right there okay you can see I've got four different LEDs flashing I'm gonna add a fifth just for fun and that one's not doing anything it's steady okay and what's going on here is I'm just really sticking these LEDs in different pinouts on the 4060 there you go now I got a lot of different blinking going on here and that's what the 4060 is for you take two random pins stick an LED on them and you get blinking and you get different patterns too that's the even fun part alright now let's see if I can get this blue one to work this blue one she's getting a bit beaten up over time I think she got too much power at one day, one sitting, and yeah, she's kind of fried. Anyhow, you can see her blinking on and off. You can get a lot of different blink rates for this. Now, I want to show you guys one thing that I found that I thought was pretty fun, so I'm going to pull most of these LEDs out of here. All right. In fact... I'm pulling all but that blue one and this red one and what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the light on for a second to make sure I get this in there right is I'm putting this red one and this blue one together there we go and what do I have police lights yay don't like it that's what the real stats for if I put a real stat in place the resistor I got a variable resistance so I can change the timing rate on the chip to speed that up and get the blinking the way I want. Now I have instant police lights. Oop, too fast. If you turn it too, the resistance too far, it will go too fast. And what happens is one of them stays solid and the other doesn't light. Because it's flickering too quickly. Okay? So you can do that. You saw earlier one of them was blinking in threes. Well, the fun part about that, and I don't remember what pinouts that was, so let me see if I can find it again. That's just a faster blink rate. So is that. I think the blinking in threes was going across. Or... Let's slow that blink rate down. Okay, now... I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this because we're jumping pretty far right now. Actually, I know how to do it. Let me take a jumper. Do I have a jumper laying around? Yeah, I can steal this one. Let me take a jumper and put it in there where that red one is. The main reason I'm having to do this is if I try to go too far I'm jumping across. Um, I'm going to short something. There's just too much going on there. It's going too, too far. So now I've got it all lined up right, and I'm not getting any blinking here. They have figures. For some reason, the red one's going, and the blue one is no longer firing. There we go. See, look. So that's a more modern police look. You just play around with this thing and you can get some different behaviors out of it. It's fun. So get yourself a breadboard, get yourself a timing chip, power supply, resistor, get a real stat like this. I don't remember the reading on this, but it was at Radio Shack and they only sell one or two. And I think it's um, 1K to 1M pot real stat. I'm not sure. All right. And start playing. You'll get lots and lots of different behaviors. You can make lots and lots of blinking lights wherever you want them. Hope you enjoyed.